So we're going to talk about the, the importance of math. I'm going to show you the math I gave for Jack, but before we do that, we have to understand where our problems are with U.S. soccer. U.S. soccer has a big problem. We don't develop center mids. We don't, I mean, n not on the, na uh, the world level. The world stage, we don't have center mids. We don't produce Martas. We don't, e even in the women's profession, uh, our, our national team for the women's side, we don't have Martas. Brazil has a lot of them. We don't have any. You know, Rosa Lavelle, she's probably the closest thing we have. But we do not have technical players. We have big, athletic, untechnical players. And when I say untechnical, not technical like the rest of the world, the rest of the world produces it. Why? And I think it's a lot to do with what they're allowed to do and what they promote. It's cultural. What, what is allowed to do? What, what can you do? What do they cheer? I think in Brazil and in Spain and in Germany, I, th I think in the playing countries where they play on the streets, they appreciate technical play. We do not. We appreciate one, two touch soccer. That's what we do in U S soccer. And obviously it's wrong because we're not producing players. It's, it's, it's our, it's our DA XDA. It's now the MLS Academy. It's all the pay to play soccer clubs that, you know, send kids D one and all over the, all over the country. They're the problem. They have to be, they're the ones in charge, right? It's a problem, but I have good news for you. You can fix this as a parent, as a coach, as a director, by focusing on math, develop everyone, focus on each individual by inviting parents to get data, whatever data you want, just have them get it. So here's Jack's data. I'm trying to create a player in my home using data. So the last six games he had, which he had six games in literally seven days. Oh my gosh, too much soccer. No, it's not. It's a math game. I always report the score like I do because I want to know how difficult the match was. There's one game they won 4-0 and the team just packed it in. It's, it's, it's math, but you have to understand how easy it was for him. So in his, all his games, he had 221 touches in a game, which a 36, um, 0.83 touch average. So touching the ball, that's, that's a significant amount. And it'd be nice to compare with others, but I want to compare this over time for Jack because he we're in a big race to get as many touches in a game as possible. His forward passes of all games, he had 45 forward passes, a 7.5 average. And then he had, uh, of those 45, um, Oh, excuse me, 45 successful passes. 18 were unsuccessful. So he had 7.5 success passing the ball forward and then an average of three bad passes per game. And then going backwards, he had 28 successful passes going backwards and three failures going um, backwards, which that's a big deal because you're passing backwards and it gets intercepted. That's a big time counterattack. Um, so his average was 4.66 4 average passing the ball successfully backwards and um, a 0.5 uh, per game average of passing the ball and be intercepted going backwards. His um, average touch rate was 2.33, and uh, he had takeaways. He had 25 takeaways taking the ball, whether it was intercepted pass or off the dribble, which was 4.167 per game. And assist takeaways were, I, I added that, because he would work hard to double team because he wanted the stats of takeaways. So I started giving him, those hustle plays, he got 13, so it's 2.16 per game. And then um, I gave him uh, another hustle play where he would sprint 10 yards uh, defensively, not offensively. And he he did that 0.33 of the time. So I'm just giving him data, and now we can have a conversation. We can have a conversation uh, at home. We can uh, really have these discussions in the car saying, hey, all right, you, you've had 221 touches you're 800 away from the 1,000 uh, touch club. Or you've had 45 successful passes going forward. So now I can say, hey, uh, soon your goal is to get 1,000. And this is your reward, whether it's a T-shirt or whatever. I want my son passing forward and less backwards because the best players in the world are able to receive the ball or identify passes going forward. The best players in the world find a way to be direct. Because the rules in soccer from our licensing says um, 
Every time you get the ball, can you score? If you can't score, can you get it to someone that can score? And the third is, all right, now keep possession. That's what we learn. But we don't teach that at all. We talk about it because that's what we do in life. If you say it, they'll give you your A license and then your super coach. And you can put on super tactical drills and realize you're part of the problem because you're not developing crap. Because you aren't. It's proven. We did not make the World Cup on the men's side. That's a big deal. How's that possible since we have pay to play everywhere and we put billions of dollars into it? So that makes no sense. We need data. If you have data, then, and this is what you can do with this data, parents, directors, you could go to your coach and say, hey, this child average uh, touches in a game is, is 0.5. Are they not playing? Oh, wait, I can see here. They're playing a, played 45 minutes in the last four months or whatever it is. You, you have data. You know your child cannot improve if they're not getting reps in the game, good reps where they actually have thought, clarity, because you have to be able to think on your own. You can't depend on a coach that's telling you everything to do because those coaches are part of the problem. We, they, they, they're more worried about winning that game in that moment versus giving kids an opportunity to think. That's what matters. That's what I stress. That's the change we need. We need to focus on the individual. We need to focus on individual opportunity and the simple math, as simplistic as you want to make it to give you the chance to do things. Compare time over success rate or whatever. You, you need to have a conversation with your coach and say, uh, my son has had a total of 200 minutes of playing this month, which might seem like a lot, but he's only had a total of 37 touches, which is an average of whatever, whatever that comes out to. And he's only uh, had 12 successful passes um, out of 17 opportunities while so-and-so is getting the ball all day long. It, data matters. And if you can't get the math, like I, I'm like panicking. Jack doesn't have practice tonight, so I'm, I'm trying to find him a 6v6 match uh, with adults. He needs touches, and I'm going to record that too, and I'm going to put it in, in his, his data chart. He needs to play. He needs the repetition. You have to get that. Now, the one thing, uh, my, my son's playing the sixth position. I need him to play other positions. Left back, up front, whatever, nine, ten, eight. He needs to play uh, more positions. He needs to score more. He needs to be able to go forward and combine. He, he's very good at playing the six and switching the point of attack, makes the team better and, and a better opportunity to win or whatever. He needs to experience different things. You can't just be one position ever in youth soccer. I don't care what age. But that's what happens. But if you build technical players based on math, and you can, it's not that difficult. I've done it. I've proven it. I've taken average players and put them in this environment where they gain confidence, they became better players, and, and progress through university, D1, you name it. I've done it with one team. It, it can be done. It can be done. So that that's all I have for today. Thank you, Uh Outrage world for destroying that poor, uh, <laughs> poor billionaire in Salt Lake. He's a racist. We have no proof, you know, because th you don't need burden of proof or anything anymore. We know what he's thinking up here, and he's white. So he's a racist. He's done. And Arizona might benefit off it. So I'm excited about that. All right. I am out of here. I'm going to put that, the music on to let you know I'm out. But I'll be back. Maybe. No, I think I will. 6 p.m. I'm going to launch my podcast every night, 6 p.m. Arizona time, which is Mountain Standard. And I'll be back with more information on tomorrow to find out who's the next racist. It might be me. I don't know what I said. I, I could be a racist right now, and people are going to dig into my life. You know, that's how we roll in this country right now. Everyone's a racist. Peace. <laughs>